recording in progress. Hey students, um, today our lecture is on building an inclusive school and I'm going to go through the lecture for this but then I'll also talk about the purpose paper and just some different um, things having to do uh, with just classroom organization and handing in assignments and stuff. Now, this is geared mostly for my online students, but of course, those of you who are face-to-face, -face, if you miss class or if you just want to review, um, then hopefully there's some value here for you as well. So today we're going to be talking about uh, building an inclusive school. And so I want to start with this question. Uh, what student populations do you feel are the most likely to feel more, uh, marginalized or excluded. Uh, now our academic vocabulary for the day is marginalized. Um, most of you probably have a sense of what that means, but let me just challenge you to think of like a, pa a piece of paper. When you have a piece of paper, you have the margins, right? They're the part on the outside. You don't typically use the margins or talk about the margins. And that's what we're talking about here when we talk about people who might feel marginalized. It's the people on the outside, the people who aren't included. Um, and so when we think about schools, typically we think there are certain groups that are marginalized. Now, um, here at SUU, um, it might be people who are not in the majority, right? So if we think about um, just ethnically, right? So if you're not white, you might feel marginalized because you're a minority. Um, religiously, the predominant culture here, um, a lot of students are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And if you're not, you might feel marginalized. Um, let's talk about other populations. Most of our students are face-to-face uh, -face and they are uh, youngish, like early 20s. And if you are either taking the class online, which most of you are, or if uh, maybe you're a little older or a little younger, then you might feel marginalized. Um, we can even go with um, socioeconomics or where we're from or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of our students are rural. So if you're from a big city, you might feel marginalized. <laughs> and so there are lots of different things. Oh, gender. If you don't identify as straight, you might feel marginalized. So those are just a few, um, but those are kind of, most of those are obvious once you get to know someone or just even seeing someone, you can kind of tell their age and, and what their ethnicity is. Um, but what about the things that maybe we don't see? Um, last week, we talked a little bit about one of the number one, or well, the number one indicator of student success is their parents' socioeconomic level. Um, but just by looking at someone, you might not be able to tell if they're rich or poor. Um, and so, um, if they are struggling financially, that's going to impact um, how they experience school. Um, other things that maybe you might not just recognize right away. So like religion, we discussed that. So you'd have to actually get to know someone to know their religious beliefs or political beliefs um, and things like that. But the, I, I had an experience a, a few years ago that I think is important in this conversation. Um, I was talking with students at Indiana University about discrimination and about um, being a minority. And I had a, a gal at the end of class that raised her hand and, and she just noted, she's like, I, I want you to know that I feel like I'm discriminated against. And now to understand this was a, a white middle-class girl um, that looked like most of the kids at Indiana University, she looked similar to everyone else. And she explained to us, the reason I feel discriminated against is because I'm a cheerleader. And I think a lot of people assume that I'm dumb. And I thought that was so interesting. Um, so that was feeling marginalized based on stereotypes. And she probably had good reason to feel that way. And it helped me understand that a lot of people, or I dare say everybody, is a minority in some way or another. Um, for example, in this class, I'm in the minority just because I'm a teacher and I'm older than most of you. Um, and so I might feel different from the rest of the group because of that. Um, you might feel that you're different from other people based on family situations or, or other things that are happening in your life. So the good news there is all of us have at least a little bit of empathy for those who might really, really feel marginalized or excluded. Now, hopefully none of you feel like you're in the margins and that you're 
you're on the outside looking in, but there probably are students in this class and certainly here at the university who feel that way. So we need to think about what we can do about that. So let's think, what can students do to help others feel included? Now I've set up, for those of you who are online, I set up a discussion board called Building an Inclusive Classroom. Um, and, oh, actually, I don't know if I did set that one up. Never mind, scratch that. Let's just think about this for a while. <laughs> so this is, again, something we discussed in our face-to-face, -face, but I, I don't think I set up a discussion board just because I have another thing related to it that's coming up here in a minute. So what can students do to help each other feel included? Um, most of this will be common sense kind of stuff. We talked about this last week with what can teachers do to help students feel successful? Well, a lot of it's having taking a personal interest in, in someone else. So as students, you can ask other people questions, not just how are you doing, but specific questions based on their interests. You know, I noticed that you did this, or, or I noticed that you like this thing. So asking questions that will really um, help you get to know someone. Sometimes opportunities might arise where you can ask people specifically about their background and their culture. Um, and those are great opportunities. Um, students can be involved, but then invite others to join them. So in a in a face-to-face -face classroom, you can sit by someone instead of sitting by yourself. Um, or you can invite someone to come join your group. Uh, and online, that's a little more difficult, but you can participate in discussion boards and you can respond to other people's responses. So a lot of our... Um, public discussion boards give you the opportunity to comment on each other's posts. And that's one way that you can help others feel included and that their voice matters. Um, I can also do a little bit more of that. And I'm trying to make time to get in and, and give more comments in response to your posts. Um, other things that students might do, uh, certainly in the elementary school classroom, I, I saw that students could um, sit by someone else during lunch or do things with them during recess, um, looking for opportunities in extracurriculars to be involved in things and to invite others along. Um, the cool thing about this is this is just how you make friends and this is a great skill in life. So um, the best way that we can help fill others inclu be included is to be kind and to be nice, um, which is great. Now, what can teachers do? Um, this is something that maybe you haven't thought a lot through, but teachers have a lot of opportunities to help their students feel included. Part of it is by um, acknowledging everyone, by writing questions and asking questions in ways that don't exclude certain populations. Um, and I'll, I'll admit right away, I'm not perfect at this. This is something that I'm working at. Um, even things as simple as you know, boys and girls, which used to be just normal for me. That's how we address students. But now it's probably better to address them as students because people might identify as something non-normative, okay? And so that's a, a tricky thing for me and I'm still learning um, how to do that better. But what else can teachers do to help their students feel included? We'll look for opportunities to include them. So simply having small group um conversations and putting your students into groups to work together and to collaborate. That's one thing that teachers can do. Um, teachers, <laughs> I love this. As an elementary school teacher, um, I worked as a matchmaker, not, not romantically, but helping students to make friends. And so I would rearrange the desks and I would put them in groups and I would switch those up from time to time so that students could interact with new people in the class and get out of their comfort zone and try new things. Um, as my students would go to recess, often I'd encourage them to try a new activity. Uh, sometimes I would reward that. And so when they'd come back from recess, I'd be like, whoever tried something new today that they haven't done in several weeks, here's, um, I use honey money in, in my classroom economy. Here's $25 of honey money. Um, or you might just encourage them to um, say hello to someone they've never talked to before or something like that. In the elementary school classroom, kids are a lot more brave and are willing to do those kinds of things. With college students, it's actually a little bit more difficult because you guys are kind of comfortable where you're at. And so, and especially in an online class, the opportunities for interaction are a little more limited. And so just take advantage of the opportunities that you do find. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else teachers can do to help others feel included. 
oh, uh, when it comes to holidays and stuff like that, acknowledge other cultures, acknowledge that things are different. And sometimes this becomes really a challenging subject. Um, if it's Christmas time and there's someone in your class that doesn't celebrate Christmas, first, you won't know know that unless you get to know your students and so getting to know your students and their families is important uh, but then if everyone is talking about Christmas it's important to talk about some of the other holidays and some of the other things that might bring people into that conversation um, and so that's important if you can participate outside of school so I've had students invite me to come to their concerts and to their athletic performances and even to cultural performances and cultural activities. Um, and so that's been a way that as a teacher, that's helped me feel included that I, I offer that to my students. I say, please let me know if there's something going on. And when they do that, like when my family went to Diwali last year uh, with one of my students and, and her family invited us to this nice dinner with a, a large Indian population in St. George. But then they went beyond that and included my kids in a dance that they were doing. And, and that was really sweet. Um, but as a teacher, then I can turn around and ask that student to, if she would be comfortable reporting to our class about some of those things that she did to recognize a holiday that most of my other students didn't recognize. And so there are little things like that that you can do. All right. Now, this is an in-class activity we did, and this is what I was referring to earlier. So I set this up for you as a discussion board. So if you'll go into Canvas and just um, go on the 50 tips and tricks to facilitate more inclusive classroom, um, in that discussion board, I have a link that will take you to the article. You're simply going to read a bunch of things that other teachers have done. Uh, to make their classrooms more inclusive. I gave you a few things that I've done in my classroom, but I want you to go through this whole list. It won't take long, just a few minutes. And then in the discussion, go ahead and respond to the prompt I put in there. And then um, simply list three things that you think are great ideas, things that you wanna try or things that you've seen other teachers do successfully. And maybe you don't have to do this last part, but if there's one that you think that's not a good idea, or I would be nervous doing that, or that might be damaging in some ways, identify that as well. Um, I know as I read in preparation for this class, I read dozens of articles that had tips and tricks, um, but I just selected one of them that I thought was pretty good. But of that list of 50, there were a few that I thought, I don't want to do that. I think that could be um, a put me in a dangerous situation, or it could be viewed as unequitable to other students. And so there were a few things that were questionable. So um, this last part here on the slide where it says, be prepared to discuss what you wrote. For those of you who are online, simply find one or two of your classmates posts and respond to them. So if you agree with that, or especially if there's one that they're nervous about, then respond to that and say, well, I've seen this in action or whatever. So simply just respond to someone else in the class, okay? Um, and that should about do it. The homework for this week, let me scroll and get my face out of the way so you can read that whole thing. You're gonna have two articles on inclusion and two articles on socialization. So for today's uh, lecture, we're focusing on those articles on inclusion. And I actually posted three the Covey one's really short. And then the other two are really long journal articles. And the way I want you to read those journal articles, I actually made a different video for you to watch on how to do academic research. And I talk about how to find good academic journal articles that will help you with the purpose paper. But also when you read research articles, you read them very differently from how you read other things. Um, if you just read it straight through, each of those articles will take you one, two, maybe even three hours. You don't need to take that long with academic research articles, at least not for this class. So please watch that video where I give you the tips and tricks on how to navigate that. So you'll have those couple articles. And then later this week, I'll be posting a couple more for you on um, the role of or, or how schools help um, students socialize. And so that will be coming up and I'll probably record another lecture on that, but I might not for you guys. It just depends on how crazy things get later in this week. Um, if I don't post that, I will post at least a discussion board so that you can comment on that. So you have those. You will have reading quizzes on both of those things. And um, the reading quizzes will just ask you to summarize the main ideas of the things that you read. And it will just keep you on task. So 
You'll have that. Your purpose paper is due this Sunday. So you have to the end of the week. Uh, most of you started that last week, but I did add some clarifying details. I've gotten a few questions for that. So I created a document called the purpose paper. Um, it's in the files section, uh, but I'll also link it in some of the resources for this module. Um, and I actually, I think I put it in the module itself. So there are more details on that. All right. Have a great week. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye.